Lord, I just I pray this morning that God, you would, uh, Father, hide, hide the flesh, God, hide my flesh behind the cross. Father, be glorified today and speak to us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I get really nervous when I stand here. <laughs> but I just want, want to take opportunity, just one moment. I want to take a moment to, uh, uh, to honor Pastor Brent and Pastor Sharon. I want to honor Pastor John, Pastor Kevin and Donna, um, the leadership of this church. Um, all of you guys are just so amazing. Thank you. Thank you for opportunity um, that you give us every day to express what God has put in our hearts. Thank you for opportunity you give us every day to collaborate with heaven as we, we partner with you. You guys are amazing. I thank you. Uh, one of my best friends, one, my bestest American friend is in the house too. <laughs> and I just, I just really appreciate Jessica's accent as well. I just, I just feel like I feel like I belong because I'm not the only one with an accent now. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Um, we're gonna try and and uh, and preach this morning, and um, just uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know. Um, I'm African, you guys know that, right? So it's really, really, really important. It's very important that you talk to me, right? That, that's right, that's right, yeah. It's really important that you engage with me, right? <laughs> yeah, he knows, yeah, right, yeah. It's really important. If you need to shout, shouting is free. You can shout, it's okay, right? If you feel like getting up and jumping, you can jump. That's allowed too. Amen? Amen. Amen. But whatever you do, whatever you do, I need you to honor God. Right? In everything that you do this morning, honor God. He gave you life. He woke you up this morning. He got you in a vehicle in a really, really, really cold weather. <laughs> and he got you here this morning. Because he has a purpose, he has a destiny, and he has a word for you today. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> now I feel at home. I'm going to read from 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16. And it says, Then the Lord... Say to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath, and as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, would you please bring me a little, a, a little water in a cup? And she was going to get it, but he called to her. Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this, this last meal and then my son and I will die. She said, I have just enough to prepare a meal for myself, and then my son and I will die. There, was not, there wasn't enough in the house to prepare a meal for the prophet, Elijah. There was only enough for her 
and her son. And yet Elijah looks at her and says, I want you to go and get me some bread. It's really interesting. It's really interesting that God had told Elijah that he had already instructed a widow in Zarephath to provide for him. So on the one hand, hang in there with me, guys. I'm going to preach this morning. It's going to be okay. On the one hand, on the one hand, on the one hand, he has this widow who has absolutely nothing. She's preparing for her last meal. On the other hand, there's a man of God that God is instructing to go to Zarephath. Both these two situations, the widow and Elijah, they had a choice to make. There was an expectation that was placed on their lives by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and they had a decision to make in the moment. Life and death hung in the balance. She has a final meal. She's going to make it. They're going to die. And yet God says that I have sent a man to you. Would you make a choice this morning? Would you make a choice in your heart to step out of your comfort zone and believe the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? So the common thread between these two men was that they had a choice to make. There was an expectation from heaven they had a choice in this moment to step out in faith and participate in their miracle. And for the miracle to take place in their lives, they had to get out of a place that was really comfortable for them. This man, Elijah, he had to begin walking. And he was going to Zarathoth in Sidon. And here is the widow who has nothing left but one meal for herself and her son. One meal for her family. All the rest of her family has been wiped away by the drought. So we stand in a moment in the balance of life and death. And a choice must be made. And so she came... And she made a choice to participate in her miracle. When she said, when she made a choice to make bread for the prophet, she was participating in her miracle. When he made a choice to travel to Sidon to meet the widow, the poorest man left around, with nothing more to give but one meal, he made a choice. And then in this place, in this moment, heaven collided. And when heaven collided, there was a miracle that happened in their lives. Because she was waiting. And while she was waiting, she was not waiting. And this morning, I want to speak on that subject. While I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. God is so good. God is, you know he's good. So you can talk to me. God is good. <laughs> he is so faithful. He is so faithful. He will use whatever is in your hand. He will use whatever he has given you. Whatever it is that you, he has you tending in this season, he will take that and he will use it to transform culture and to transform lives around you and to set your city ablaze for him. God, he is so faithful. And that everything that you need to go to the next level this morning is in your hands. Everything that you need, everything that you need to conquer the, 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 whatever it is you struggle with, day in and day out, it's in your hand. He has given you the keys. But the choice remains up to me and you. Because your miracle, your miracle, your miracle is dependent upon your participation in the process. Amen. Amen. 
So, verse number eight says this. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of hope came. The word of deliverance came. The word of provision came. The hope that does not disappoint, it came. The word of healing came. Are you catching this? The word of healing came. That what God has spoken concerning you, it came. That what God says about you is true. Amen. That what God has, uh, has destined for your life, the word of the Lord came. There is no hope except the word. It came. The situation was hopeless, but the word came. She was on her final meal. By the word of the Lord, it came. She had to make a choice. By the word of God, it came. And that it is no man that he should lie. Whatever he has said, he will do. You can count on it all day long. From the beginning of, the, of time until today, your God, my God, he has been faithful. Generation after generation, the word of the Lord came and the word of hope came. Whatever you're going through this morning, I need you to understand the word of the Lord has come. That healing is your portion. That deliverance is in, your, in the house today. Wherever you find yourself, wherever you're sitting this morning, the word of the Lord has come. And when God shows up, it's so easy. It's easy to think or feel that in the busyness of everything around us, that somehow that God would forget you. That somehow, with everything that's happening around you, that God would not value what you value. That is wrong. He values everything that you value. He wants to dream with you again. Concerning your marriage, God wants to dream with you. Concerning relationship, God values every relationship in your, in your life. He values you so much that he says, according to my riches and glory, you will never have your last meal. But there has to be a participation in the miracle. And that's why I need you to talk to me. That is participation. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Because you know God is good. You know God is good. You know the word of the Lord is here. You know God came. He is in the house this morning. So Holy Spirit. Take your place. In every corner. In every seat. On every seat. Holy Spirit. Take your place this morning. The word of hope is this. That's all his promises for you. Everything that's been spoken concerning your life from heaven is yes and amen. amen. You can count on it. Your participation in the miracle, do you believe it? The word of hope this morning, it was
was sung here today. It was prophesied here today. It was released here this morning. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Fresh outpouring. Marriage is restored. It's a new day. It's a new day. Relationships mended. It's a new day. It's a new day. Debt paid off supernaturally. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new hour. It's a new moment. It's a new moment. Your, your participation in the miracle will determine the outcome of your miracle. Because God, he was always ready to freely give. Because God, he is always ready to freely give. And everything that you need, God is always ready to freely give. Hang in there with me for a minute because I'm going to preach this morning. Yes, I'm going to preach because I'm ready for it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling this thing this morning. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. I can't help it. I'm African. I can't help it. I can't help it this morning. God is so good. And God is so faithful. And God, he's worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. Everything concerning your life, he is worthy of it all. So he comes to the gate and there's a widow. She's gathering sticks. And he calls on to her and says, I need some water. And she goes to get water and says, bring me some bread too. And she says, I don't have bread. I'll get you some water. I don't have bread. I only have enough for my family. What is God saying? Number one, she had nothing except what she had. But she had a choice to make in this moment. It was the end of her and her son's life. She was going to make what she had. They're going to eat it. Then they're going to die. So Elijah ends up in front of the neediest person around. Just sounds like God. And God expected Elijah to fully rely on the neediest person in the world, in the region, to provide for him. All she had was a little oil and some flour. But the expectation from heaven was that Elijah, you're going to rely on her. And I know, you know, she has told you that is all she had. Elijah had a choice to make. He had to get past the natural and begin to see in the supernatural. He had to get beyond the temporary and begin to see the eternal. He couldn't rely on the visible. He had to see. He had to learn to see the invisible. God was teaching him to see with his and not that. God was teaching him to see with his heart. God was teaching him to see with heaven's eyes. God was teaching him to learn how to call labor with heaven and see provision released. God was calling him to make a choice to participate in the miracle that we'll be talking about and we're still talking about it today. Because he made a choice, we are still talking about it today. What story are you writing for your children and your children's children? What will they say years from now, decades from now, you have a moment and a time in history to make a choice that will change generations. Because everything that you need to change generations. It's in your hands. What has God given you? 
And why are you not using it? What has God given you? And why do you sit on it? What has God given you? And why do you wear it? What has God given you? The choices you make are not just about you. The generations to come will change. You can't afford to stay the same. That your children and your children's children will serve the Lord. You cannot afford not to make the choice. You must make a choice. You must make a decision to participate in the miracle. Amen? Because when, <laughs> when you step out in faith, he always shows up. <laughs> when you step out, he always shows up. <laughs> Anybody here been in a dry place? Your marriage has dried up. Your bank account has dried up. Maybe a friendship is on the rocks. Maybe a dream, a dream that God gave you, an aspiration. That you, you find yourself in a place that you are stuck and you don't know how to get out of it. You've ever been there? She had to bring what she had to Elijah with no evidence that more would show up. This is a faith walk. You don't have to see the miracle before you believe for the miracle. You don't have to step out in you don't have to wait for the miracle before you step out in faith. It is a choice we get to make every morning, every evening, all day long. It's a choice you get to make. Will you step into your miracle with God? Will you participate? Will you align yourself with heaven and see his kingdom released? It really is that simple. It was never supposed to be complicated. It is just that simple. It is a choice. Because it's a faith work. It is a faith work. And God is calling you. And God is calling me to stretch. And to make room. Make room. For your miracle. Make room for your deliverance. Make room. Make room. Make room. Stretch and make room. Give. Even if you don't know that it's going to come back to you. It is a faith walk. It really is a faith walk. It always was a faith walk. It must always remain a faith walk. She could have said, I need this meal. I'm afraid. If I give you my last meal, I'm going to die hungry. You are dying anyways. Who cares? So she went beyond the natural. And the supernatural showed up in her life. She went beyond what she could see with her physical eyes and she went in the, in the spiritual eyes and God began to move in her life and she went and she went and she went and she never stopped. She went all, way, all in out, all, all the way in and she prepared her last meal. This is how she added it. She ushered in the supernatural. She gave out of her need and she gave fast. She didn't eat fast and then give. She gave out of her need and she gave fast. And the flour kept pouring and the oil never ran out. And the watchman and the widow, Elijah and the widow, they ate and they ate 
and they ate. Because when you step out in faith and participate in your, fa in, 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 in your miracle, he always shows up. God always shows up. When you step out of service, into service, like to serve in children's ministry, you step out of service and you step into service. He always shows up. He always shows up. He always shows up. He always shows up. When you prepare a meal for the person sitting next to you and you have them around your kitchen table, God will always show up. God will always show up. He always shows up. When you intentionally find people to love and find people to bless, God will always show up. He always shows up. He always shows up. When you forgive those that wrong you, he always shows up. He is the God of redemption. And he is the God of restoration. And he is the God who reclaims. And that he always shows up. He always shows up. And some of us have killed our dream. Because of disobedience. This widow could have killed her dream. She had to make a choice. Life and death hung in the balance. She had to make a choice. She had to make a choice. And I feel like for some of us today, like life and death, it hangs in the balance concerning situations in your life. But I got good news for you. The word of the Lord, it came. The only thing you need to do is really simple. Step out your box. Participate in the miracle. Just like that. And that healing came. And just like that, that marriage was restored. And just like that, relationships were mended just like that. It was that simple. All you had to do would not have, was not have a big head, but trust God to carry you. That's all you had to do. All you had to do was humble yourself because he's the only one that can elevate you. Nobody else can. Nobody else can. He's the only one that can make a way where there is no way. And all you had to do was just step out a little bit and participate in your miracle. It was that easy. Because while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. Because while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. Because while you're waiting for your breakthrough, you're not wailing. Because while you're waiting, waiting for your children to come back home, you are not waiting. Because while you're waiting for your bank account to start growing, you're not waiting. While you're waiting on the Lord, you're not waiting. It's in the serving that you wait. She prepared her last meal and she served her last meal. And the blessing of the Lord, it never stopped pouring on her life. And the blessing of the Lord in her life was endless. And she ate and she ate and she ate and she ate. And the prophet ate in the waiting. She was not waiting. Why are you waiting? You are not waiting. Why are you waiting? You're stepping out of service into service. Why are you waiting? You're not waiting. Why are you waiting? And what you need today? How can I serve you today? Why are you waiting? Can I be a blessing to you today? Why are you waiting? I got some groceries for you. It is simple. Why are you waiting? Can I come and sit with you? And how was your day? And how was your week? And why are you waiting? And sometimes we have made this process so difficult for the average person to get that people come to church and live more confused. That was never kingdom. And that is not kingdom. It was this simple that I'm going to come alongside you. And while I wait for the miracle, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I'm going to wait with you. 
You can belong before you give your life to him. You can belong. Because while I'm waiting, and some of your biggest miracle this morning is going to be to learn. If you don't get anything out of this word this morning, Heaven lives in you. Heaven lives inside of you. The king of kings, he lives inside of you. The presence of God, you carry heaven. You carry heaven's mandate. You carry the presence of God everywhere you go. Will you learn to? Because while I'm waiting... Not waiting. Because heaven lives in me. Let's sing that our hill song. And every time they sang it, I looked on Stevie looking for Jessica. I told her that when she came home. <laughs> You have to trust God, <laughs> knowing that it's already done. So when you do this, it's already done. In your waiting, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. You have to believe because it's already done. Just because you don't have enough today, it doesn't mean you won't have an abundance tomorrow. It's already done. That he will meet every need according to his riches in glory. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. He always shows up. This is the word for you this morning. We still need leaders in our Sunday school. You can shout all you want. But your heart will always take you. I know I'm making some of you uncomfortable. But I don't care. If you don't like me, I'll just go back to Africa. I don't really care. <laughs> I can always go back home. But your miracle is tied up to this. Point number two. The test of physical impossibilities. What was point number one? <laughs> That's right, yeah. All of them are good. <laughs> the test of physical impossibilities. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. If you're yawning, stop yawning. Because I'm about to preach. Just stay with me. Stay with me one moment. I will preach. I will preach. I promise you. I'm about to preach. Just stay with me. Elijah said, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me. Yeah. While you're waiting. Bring it to me, and then you can go back home and make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, God of Israel says, that the jar 
of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the Lord gives rain on the land. Go prepare me a meal first. Bring it to me. I'm going to sit down and wire it. You can take a walk back home and you can prepare some food for yourself and your son. And while you, if you can do that, if you can participate in your miracle, your resources will never empty because heaven's resources that they are always unlimited. This woman, she represents a situation that in our natural eyes is completely impossible. But I heard somebody say, when the word came, that nothing was impossible with God. Did you guys know that? That nothing was impossible with God. That what she re represented, it didn't matter before God. If she would step out and participate in the miracle, that nothing was impossible. So Elijah was asking this woman, she was asking this widow in her weakness to be used so that God's strength could be revealed in her life. Be used where I have put you. Be faithful tending what I've, uh, what I've asked you to tend. Be faithful looking after who I've asked you to look after. Be faithful serving where I've told you to serve. And when you do that, my strength will be revealed in you because I'm the only one who can announce you to the nations of the world. I'm the only one who can promote you. Nobody else can but God. And yet we spend our whole life seeking promotion, seeking identity, seeking to be noticed. But God says, if you stay faithful in what I've called you to do, and just do that, and do it well. Become the best that you can become at doing what I've called you to do. And do it with excellence. And do it with purpose because you've been called to serve with purpose. And do it with intention because that's the only way you show up when you don't feel like showing up. Elijah put an expectation on the widow to step into her miracle. He told her, please, he didn't tell her, please do this. He said, this is what you need to do. There was an expectation from heaven that was put upon your life. That if you, that, that if you step out in faith, that God will make a way where there is no way that God will meet the need that you thought you could never meet, that God will solve the problem in your life that you thought was impossible, that God would. There was an expectation from heaven that God himself put on your life to step into the miracle that he has for you, to step into the blessings that he has for you, to step into favor in the name of Jesus. God, he put that on you. It is time, it is time to come to church with an expectation from heaven. And that when you arrive here, that you step into the miracle that God has for you. When you come here and you go away the same way, why are you coming? Because the miracle was always at hand. But your participation was required. 
and that your engagement in the process, it was required. And that God, he wanted to have dialogue with you every day concerning this purpose, concerning this miracle, concerning, concerning what is put inside of you. I know he's put dreams in you. And some of us have been praying for the same dreams the last 10 years. That is not even normal. And all you had to do was step out in faith and walk in your miracle. All you had to do was empty yourself of yourself so he can fill you with himself. It was that simple. God wants us to use what he's given us regardless of how insignificant it may appear to you and to the person next to you. Because the king of kings, he puts you right where you are are today, at the right time, at the right hour, you are in this church this morning for such a time as this. You came here today because he wanted you here today. Because he has something that he wants to deposit in you that will cause you to step out of your box and receive your miracle. Your participation is required for your miracle to be fulfilled in your life. What is it you're hanging on to? What are you holding on to this morning? What has God given you? What has God given you? We are a prophetic church. How many prophetic words have you received? And how much time have you spent asking for more? You're not even tending the word he gave you in the first place. That is even mandates for your life and my life. That's the only way you can say, while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. Because he's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. So Elijah says, don't worry, don't panic. And this is the powerful word to a generation that has not learned to tend what God has called you to tend. Don't worry and don't panic. Believe. Put your faith in him. Because if you say, I put myself in you, then the response that is coming out of your heart we always look like this. It's time to stop declaring I'm more than a conqueror when you haven't conquered anything. And how you conquer is you do this. It is simple. It is basic. And the, the word of God always came to bring hope and redemption. This kind of faith, it only comes when we believe that we believe 
But we believe that our God, he is unchanging. This kind of faith only comes when we look back on our lives and we say, God, yes, we were tending that and we messed up, but you are faithful and you brought me through that. This kind of faith only comes when you begin to count his blessings in your life. Some of you will be here this morning except for God. He made a way for you. He gave you breath this morning. And the only thing we can do for him is give him everything we have. And the only thing we can do for him is say, God, you are worthy of it all. Because while I'm waiting, I am not. And some of us, God is teaching us to see, to see him, not to the natural eyes, but to go back and begin to recognize what God has done for us. Because everything around you says this is so difficult, this is so hard. This will never work out. And that is why you can never depend on everything around you to determine what God has for you. You have to be able to put your trust in the all-sufficient God and say, I will step out in faith and I will step out into my miracle. It is an engagement. That you were never a robot. He wanted to call labor with you. He wanted to engage with you. He wanted to converse with you. That is the God that we serve. His love for us was so intimate. It was personal. Let us reason together. But will you for a moment, son, daughter, be faithful in what I asked you to do in the beginning? All of us. And I feel like some of us have been through, been through too much. And maybe we're feeling like, God, is this ever going to end? The word of the Lord came. Don't lose hope. He is still on the throne. Don't be discouraged. He is still on the throne. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope that the king of kings, he still sees you. He still values you. He knows the plans that he has for you. He called you for such a time as this. He, oh God, help me preach this morning. Somebody needs to know that God knows you. That you are not forgotten. That he sees you every moment and every hour. That you are on his heart every day. Because if we can understand that, that will give us the strength to walk into a miracle, to engage with heaven, and to participate with God in the simplest way that we know possible by serving you. Whatever you're going through, your situation is a ways direction from you. If you speak to what's happening in your life, it will be sorted out. Your spirit and the gift of buying and the gift of selling that God has put in your life it awaits your participation because the king of kings, he was always ready for the miracle. But were you ready to receive the miracle? Because it is. <laughs> this is the faith walk. This is the faith walk. It is a, pay, a work of faith. It's sometimes stepping into the unknown. And you don't know how it's going to turn out. But you just know that God has spoken. 
And you know that you have witnessed from heaven. And last time I checked with Elon Hill, he told me, Willis, I'm feeling the same thing. Let's contend. While you're waiting, <laughs> I'm not waiting. While you're waiting, you're not waiting. So fight, First Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to be done in about 10 minutes. Fight, I need to preach just a little bit because I'm just getting there. I need to preach. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses. Mark 11, 20 uh, to 25, I'm going to read some of it. It says, in the morning as they, they went along, they saw a fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said, Jesus, Rabbi, look, the tree you cast, you cast us withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I say to you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that they will happen, it will be done for them. And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. This faith walk that allows us to serve functions to us a destiny in all of our lives. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And because without faith, some of us will always stay where we're at. Because we never stepped out to participate in the miracle. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word came. So Jesus said. He said this. <laughs> he said. Whoever says to this mountain. Be moved. And does not doubt in their heart. But they believe that it shall be done. It shall be done. Whoever means anybody. Whosoever means anybody. Whosoever shall have whatsoever. Whatever you ask, if you believe, he will deposit into you. Whosoever shall receive whatsoever. Whosoever shall have whatsoever. But the participation is up to you. That is the choice you get to make. Whosoever shall receive whatsoever. And sometimes, sometimes when we get tired of waiting, and sometimes when we get discouraged because we haven't learned to wait while we're waiting, we begin to speak words that will cancel the very blessing that God has promised you. Don't cancel the purpose of God in your life by the words you speak. Don't eradicate his favor from your life with what you say. Don't speak evil because that's not kingdom. Stay in alignment with God. And the best way I found out how to do that myself is to stay in relationship with him and do this. Job, Job's wife says, enough is enough. 
He has forgotten you. Just cast God and die. Job's response was this. If I can cast, I'm not going to do that. Because if I can cast God and die, I can bless God and live. And some of you need to bless God so you can have life. Some of you need to exalt God so you can live. Some of you need to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. He has done something for you. You know he has. He set you free. You know he did. You know he did. Bless God. Let everything that has breath, bless God. Life and death. Because God is no respect of persons. Right? And so he chose... He chose this woman, and I'm just about to finish. He chose this woman that had absolutely nothing. She was on her last dime. There was nothing left. There was no hope except that the word came. The only hope she knew was everybody around her had withered away and died. And the only hope she knew was at least I'm going to die with my stomach full. There was no other hope, but the word of God, it came. It came and it restored. It came to reclaim. It came to heal. It came to provide. It came. It's amazing he'll choose the one who was the neediest from what I read. That is really amazing. Because sometimes we think that our value is based on what we can do or what we have to offer. That I'm better than you because I can do this. And you're better than me because you can do that. And because you can function this way, that somehow you are important. But God, he chose the neediest person to show his grace, his love, his provision, and his deliverance. He chose the woman who had nothing, but she had to engage in the process. He chose her because he wanted you and I to know that even for the woman and the man and the family that's planted in Abbotsford on the streets of God with the biggest house that this world can can offer to a pastor in a, small, in, in a small church somewhere in Saskatchewan where they can't even get more than three people to come to service. He chose this woman to show you that even for a little boy in the village of Africa who's malnourished and walks around with a belly because, on, because he has not been able to eat proper food. And he chose this woman to show you that. Even for the most affluent of all, the most influential man in the world, who can sit down and dine and eat with the kings of this world and the rulers of this world. And he chose this woman to show you and I his no respect of person. That even for the man and the woman who is so disillusioned and so broken and so hopeless and sleeps every day on the streets of Vancouver, on Hastings, he chose he, this woman to show us, all of us, we are in need of the same grace. We are in need of the same savior. We are in need of the same word. Jesus, the word that brings deliverance. Jesus, the word that heals. Jesus, the word that restores. We are all in need of that. That except for God, we are so dysfunctional. But God. But God. So if you confess... If you'll agree with heaven concerning what God says about you. And you'll be faithful in just managing what God has called you to manage. 
That's all he's asking of you. Just do what I've called you to do. Don't worry about anybody else. Just be faithful in where I have you today. Be faithful in the situation I have you in today. Be faithful in the mandate I've put you in your life for this season. Be faithful in the service area that I've called you to for this season. Don't worry about anybody else. Be faithful for where I have you and do this. Because my call on, on the call of God on my life, the call of God on your life always requires your participation. And I don't care what people say. And I don't even care how they look at me. I don't care if they mock me. I don't care if they like me. I can always go back to Africa, but that's not the point. I really don't care, but I really do care that I'm doing what God has called me to do. How in the world can you say, let the weak say, and let the poor say, if you haven't learned? The word of God will, will change your life to the degree that you allow him to use you in your service. Not for yourself, but for those God has called you to serve. Not for fame, because he's the only one that can promote you. And some of you need some humility this morning. We are called to bring heaven. <laughs> I'm just about that. Into every situation. It's going to be good. 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 Let the weak say. And let the poor say. Let the weak say. And let the poor say. Come on. You can release this morning. Let the weak say. Let the poor say. Hallelujah. Why? Why? Let the weak say, and let the poor say, because the manifestation, the manifestation was this, guys. There was no Abraham, but inside of me, I was carrying an Isaac. The manifestation, David, a shepherd boy, but inside of me, I am a giant slayer. The manifestation was this, guys. The manifestation was this. Joseph in prison. But inside of me, I am carrying a coat of many colors that will rule the world because of the calling and the purpose and the mandate from heaven that God has put on my life. But first, I had to be faithful, serving. Manifestation, David the shepherd boy, but I'm anointed and a king in waiting. How do you get to the throne? Oh, <laughs> the manifestation, Paul, murderer, but I am, I am the teacher, I am the pillar of the New Testament church. What is it you're speaking concerning you? What do you believe in your heart concerning you? What has God told you about you? What is the one thing that God has given you and has told you to serve and to tend carefully until he calls you to the next level? What, it is, what is it? Because your keys to the next level is, is tending and, and being faithful where God has you today. And this morning, some of us are ready for a new season. And this morning, some of us are ready for the new level. And this morning, God is going to repurpose and reorganize everything around you so he can bring promotion into your life. But it's going to take your participation. The 
because it was always and always must be about taking care of what God has called you to take care of. He has you seated here this morning because you know what he has put in your heart. What is it that burns in your heart every day? What is the miracle that you have been contending for year after year after year? And every new year you make another resolution. This year, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to get it. Come hell or high waters, I'm going for it. What is it? And yet in simplicity, all you had to do was surround yourself with people in community that love you, that call out the best in you, and do this. Can I have some music this morning? And so if you're here this morning and God has been tugging on your heart and some of you, your participation in the miracle is actually going to, be, to get out of your seat and just come here and talk to God. I'm not going to invite the ministry team, I'm just going to ask you to come and talk to God because he's here, he sees you, he values you, and he wants to hear what you have to say. So if that's you, I'm going to leave this open. Because God wants to meet you, he's been speaking to you. You can have your miracle today. You can receive your healing today. Who cares what the person next to you thinks? Who cares what they're going to say afterwards? This is your moment with God. This is your moment with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is your moment. Come talk to your Father. He wants to hear your voice. He delights in hearing you tell him what he already knows about you. <laughs>